when I came off the, the show, all of the other presenters were there high-fiving me and screaming. Like, it was like Hollywood. <laughs> Literally, it was like Hollywood. I came off, I was so under pressure. I burst out crying. They're all screaming. All the, like Americans, they were high-fiving, <laughs> screaming, going, oh my God, this girl is a superstar. And we were like, <laughs> we couldn't believe it. The Architects of Business with EY Entrepreneur of the Year, telling the inspirational stories behind Ireland's most successful entrepreneurs. Hello and welcome to the Architects of Business, made in partnership with EY Entrepreneur of the Year, where you will hear the inspirational stories of some of Ireland's most successful entrepreneurs. I'm Sonia Lennon, broadcasting remotely from my home at this time. And on this week's show, I chat with Sonia DC, the founder of Pestle & Mortar, an Irish skincare company which has gone global at high speed. Herself and her husband have to ask themselves one question. Can we launch a skincare brand with just one product? If you haven't already done so, click subscribe to get new shows directly into your feed. Sonia DC, founder of Pestle and Mortar, thank you so much for joining me today on Architects of Business. Um, I'm always very excited when a female entrepreneur comes onto the show um, because it's a bit of a go girl situation. Your story, I've heard it before. Um, I've been privileged to be in a very um, exclusive room hearing um, your incredible story before and it, it never gets old because it is um it, it's pretty much a soap opera except with serum um and and your backgrounds um your your great grandfather or your grandfather in india um kind of sowed the seeds for what you're doing now he did sonia um yeah so my <clears throat> my grandfather he was the medicine man in india in his in a village where my father grew up but my uncle, so my dad's brother, he still practices um, medicine in the same spot that my grandfather did in India. So natural healing goes back in my family over 100 years. So and I, I, can't, I can't keep talking to you without commenting on your environment. You look like you're in the equivalent of sort of NASA of skincare. Where are you coming to from right now? So from our offices in Kildare, um, in Nace, um, so the background is our showroom. So this is an example behind me of how our products can look in a retail store. <laughs> That's, it's amazing. It, it, it looks so good. It nearly looks fake. And I mean that with love. <laughs> My husband is a, is a portrait photographer. So <laughs> and we'll, we'll come to that. <laughs> yeah. We'll come to that. So tell us then, when did your family move to Ireland? So my, oh God, so my parents are in Ireland over, my eldest brother is 50, so 55 years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And, and the go-to um, profession, obviously uh, limited uh, desire for medicine men in Kildare. Um, what did your father do? Well, my father is, a, he studied engineering in India, but he um, he had a, a fashion retail store, so it was more like a general drapery store where he would have been the very first, the only store in Kildare that you could get branded goods, anything from Playtex bras to Clark's <laughs> shoes. Cutting edge. Yes. <laughs> it was at the time. Levi, Levi's jeans and Doc Martens. Yeah. Okay, you have me now, Sonia. <laughs> yeah. You have me now. <laughs> I was that girl. And I get the impression that when you um when you made your college choices that you were very much shepherded in that direction. Well, my you know, I my my father wanted me to be a teacher. <laughs> so um I, the compromise then was I said, okay, well, I will do an arts degree because I'm not too sure if I want to do teaching. So um I studied philosophy and history in German in UCD. Um and then I didn't go into teaching. <laughs> but he I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> but he, you know, he always he he didn't mind after that. So he said, once you have a foundation of an education, if everything else fails, at least you have something that you can fall back on. That Fantastic. was his philosophy. And, and so how soon after college did you meet your husband? 
Oh, so my husband grew up, I've got four brothers and one sister. So my husband grew up in the same town as myself. His parents had a family business literally across the road from my parents. And he was, and still is, one of my brother's best friends. So um, <laughs> I've known him my whole life, but we, we, we kind of got together late when we were 26 and got married 11 months later and had our first child 11 months after. <laughs> well, I, th I think when people hear your full story of your success, um, you're not one to hang about. So that doesn't surprise <laughs> me. <laughs> But your husband had his own um, photography business. He did. So he he's a portrait photographer. So his business as well was second. It was multi generational. So his dad was was a photographer in the town, and he took over the business. Um, and we got when we got married. Um, I was working in my own family business, which was I was a fashion buyer. So I was traveling all around the world buying fashion, and he asked me to join his family business. So I was working with my siblings um, and they, they weren't very happy about it. They, they said, okay, if this is what you want to do, you make the decision, we're not gonna stop you. So I sat down with my husband and at this time in his family business, his parents were still involved in the business. So our plan was that we would buy out his parents and allow them to retire when they were 53. <laughs> nice. And <laughs> yeah, so so uh, allow them to retire and um, run, take over the business. And that's what we did. We ran our portrait studio. And when the recession hit, our business got hit really badly because we were we weren't um, we know we didn't do wedding photography. So it was a pure luxury. The service we were offering was complete luxury. So it was high end portrait photography. Um, and our customers were families like your own or mine with young kids. So they, they got hit the worst in the recession. So our business, when the recession hit, our business pretty much fell. We lost, I would say, 60% of our turnover. So here we were running a portrait studio in Newbridge, husband and wife, eating out of the same pot with five children. <laughs> so, you paid um, an <laughs> So we, um, we had started um, dipping our toe into education, I, I would say probably two years before the recession hit. And it, slow, it kind of very quickly moved into part, a big part of our business. So while we were educating and traveling around the world, particularly in America, um, I saw a different side to the photography business that I'd never seen before, which was commercial photography so we never did fashion shoots or all that glitz and glamour we never had models in the studio so I never saw makeup artists working with model skin or prepping their skin but at these conferences I saw all of that happening so I used to sit behind the scenes um, watching the makeup artist prepping the model skin and I was fascinated um, so I take a look behind the photographer's lens and see oh my god their skin looks amazing and then I started thinking what products are they using why does their skin look so good because I'm looking at the model now and her skin really doesn't look that good and what if I had a product that I could give the mothers that have had so little sleep um, coming into me and make their skin look amazing glowing dewy full of life and youthful um, and that's what I was thinking so I got chatting to the makeup artists and they're showing me their products and they were all using products with hyaluronic acid in them and I'd never heard of hyaluronic acid in my life so I have a sister and she's a, she studied biochemistry and I called her and I asked her about hyaluronic acid so I'm very much black or white. So I said, you know, does it work or doesn't it work? And she said, yeah, it does work. It's naturally present in our bodies um, and it's a proven ingredient. It's actually been around for years. I don't know why you're asking me about it. And I said, look, this, I've seen this work. So like, m look at our own skin, yeah? Surely our skin can look better. Have you ever used a cream with this in it? And she said, no. So I went and I bought every single product I could find with hyaluronic acid in it. Like I spent thousands. So every, my husband thought, everyone thought I was insane. So spent thousands. And the one conclusion I came to was 
no matter how much I spent, whether it was 500, 300 or 20 euro, I didn't like any of them. And there was one outstanding factor in all of them. They were all sticky and tacky and they felt awful on my skin. So <laughs> that was the so first. I, I, love, um, I love the sense that, first of all, that your ability to connect with people and to extract really valuable information from people has been a, a trademark of every decision you've made. So, Sonia, you have spent your savings on every hyaluronic acid product there is, and you hate them all. Um, what does a girl with your background do from there? <laughs> so I set about creating my own one. <laughs> so with the help of did. my sister, yeah, <laughs> with the help of my sister, um, I did my research and we created our first product. Um, so obviously I uh, Porik designed the packaging um, and we knew, it, you know, it's going to be black and white, it's going to be minimalistic, it has to look luxurious. Um, so that's how we started. <laughs> and, and did you know at that stage um, how important it was where you positioned yourself in the market? We, we didn't do much market research in regards as we, like, apart from what I already knew, like, of course, I love, shop, I love shopping, I know about luxury items, you know, I understand the, the, the you know, I, I knew we weren't going to be creme de la mer price, so we were looking at somewhere in the middle at affordable luxury. Um, so we needed our packaging and our branding to reflect that. And we, we knew that. And when you started, um, how, how clear was the vision for what it could be? We knew there was, we, when we started, we, we had one product and we said to ourselves, we had started seeing this photo with 300 SKUs and we knew how difficult it was to market 300 individual products. We knew we were pretty okay at marketing, <laughs> the, two, the two of us. We knew we could do a good job at marketing and that was always our core strength. So we said to ourselves, what if we had a brand, a skincare brand that had just one product? How well, we used to dream about, oh my God, we could market it so well. We could do this, we could do that. And um, all of our time is just spent on one single product. We can get the copyright, get the photography right, push it out everywhere. That was what we, we dreamed of. This brand new product that is um, gonna shake up the marketplace um, in so many ways. What does one do first? So the first thing we did was I have a friend, an old, an old school friend who has a PR company in Newbridge. So I rang her and I said, look, I have this beauty product. And she said, oh, my God, you have what? When did you do this? Because we didn't tell anyone about it because we the, I told one person about it and they completely knocked me down straight away and said, oh, you're if you think you are going to get into Grand Thomas or Arnott's, you know, you've got another thing coming to you. You're going to be banging down their doors. And I said, well, who said I want to get into Grand Thomas or Arnott's? You know, I, I, you know, um, so people, you know, some people, that's the nature of people. Um, some people are like, and that. I they think just that's actually, down. that's actually the entrepreneur's gift is to be able to rise above that kind of negativity mm -hmm. and, and, and stay firm to the vision of what they can see in the future. So what was, yes. what was the PR plan to launch the product? So the PR plan was, okay, Ireland is quite a small, um, market PR wise. So I'll give you a list of the 30 top editors and beauty writers in Ireland and you send them a product. And that's what we did. So she gave me the list and we sent out by courier one product to everyone with a press release. Um, and that was it. So we, so, you know, sometimes people say is there, we, there was a bit of luck involved, I think, that we, we didn't know that there was no hyaluronic serum on the market in Ireland that was 
priced at for our, our price is 43 euro. We didn't know that it was just about to become really popular here. And we happened to be on the, the, the very first ones um, with, with that type of product. Subsequently, over the last five years, there's a lot of products that have come out after us. Um, but, but we were one of the first. And had you not, and, had you not seen that gap through your, um, you know, your shopping uh, explosion where you where you bought all the the products. No, I I didn't see that, Sonia. But what I what I wanted to create was a product that um, was not sticky or tacky. A product that I couldn't find out on the marketplace when I did my research. So I was. I wasn't, I was blinded by that. My only focus was to create a product that was effective and worked and absolutely luxurious to use at a certain price point. And nothing else mattered to me. I didn't care. I couldn't find it. So in my own mind, that product didn't exist. There's a lovely purity about that in terms of, you know, if the, and it's so true, if the product is right, um, everything falls out of that. So you must have known when, when that landed with such a bang um, and presumably the, the column inches followed and the coverage followed and all of a sudden people were hearing about pestle and mortar. And I, in fact, I remember that. I remember okay. really well that it was an explosion, brand new product. And there's no doubt about it that the level of um, packaging and positioning really supported um, the desire for your product. The moment we knew was when we launched the first week, we appeared on Expose TV, the TV program, which is no longer, but we got a, I think it was a 16 minute mention and it was literally just a picture of the serum and our web address, new product launch. Um, and we had our own web, we had our website set up and the payment gates and it all worked. And immediately we started getting sales. So. If anybody has experience with online businesses, it's not easy to get your product to sell online. But back then it wasn't anyway. <laughs> so it, it, it's just not easy. And we knew with seeing this photo that was an online business, what it took to get sales. And here we were sitting in our living room and it, our product appeared on TV for 60 seconds and our phones, they did not stop pinging. Like the sales just kept on coming in. And we were sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God. And the kids were like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? So we, oh, sorry. So at that point then, we knew. You knew you had a hit. And I we guess, um, you know, the two of you must also have known that uh, if you were able to, to launch with such a bang in Ireland, that opportunities also existed outside the island. So immediately then, within the first week, we got a call from Liberty in London um, and I flew over and I met the buyers and I was, met them in the cafe and here was me I, uh, in Liberty in London. I didn't, you know, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe that they were selling Liberty to me, selling their heritage and, you know, I think your brand is really well positioned and really would you consider you know, stocking, allowing us to sell your product. <laughs> I was going, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So, and then from there, um, we, went, we went to New York. We appeared on QVC, um, USA. Uh, so sold. what happened? You have to yeah. tell us that. That is such an extraordinary story. So myself and my husband had our marketing plan was, let's get on to QVC USA because they have millions and bit 400 million is their audience. So imagine 400 million people looking at our product, like it's free marketing, it's free advertising. And that was our idea, yeah. So I don't know, I don't think any other Irish brand had been on QVC USA main channel ever before. So here we were, we called them, um, sent our product in and they said yeah they replied and said yeah we love your product we love your story we sent a video of the story we love your story can you fly over and meet us in our head offices in philadelphia so we sure? Uh, no said problem. sure so we flew over 
myself and my husband flew over for the meeting and we were in the room and we thought, oh, they're going to say, like, literally, we had only launched the brand like six months and we thought they're going to say, yeah, come back in three years when you've more products and, or, you know, um, and in that room, they said, yeah, absolutely. We want to have you on TV. From the day they said, yes, it took 18 months to actually get on it. Um, and at that point, we had three products and they picked our most expensive product, which is our retinol night oil, our superstar. And it's, it retailed at $109 in America. And I went on for seven minutes and we sold out. And less than 1% of new brands sell out on QVC the first time they appear. So we, we were the highest grossing sales per minute that night which was extraordinary. When I came off the, the show, all of the other presenters were there high-fiving me and screaming. Like, it was like Hollywood. <laughs> Literally, it was like Hollywood. I came off, I was so under pressure. I burst out crying. They're all screaming. All the, like Americans, they were high-fiving, <laughs> screaming, going, oh my God, this girl is a superstar. And we were like, <laughs> we couldn't believe it. Yeah, so it was extraordinary. So from there, we got into, we're stocked in all the Bloomingdale's, we're stocked in um, Neiman Marcus Online, Anthropology, um, Face Gym. So. <laughs> and what was, what was the next move then? Because you're, you're, you're chunking out global domination at this stage. And I've seen, um, I, I can't, it was maybe a year ago, um, a beautiful display, um, Zalando, the online store, have a, yeah. a physical store in Berlin yes. and walking into that physical store and seeing the prominence of your brand I, I felt a, a groundswell of pride <laughs> as an Irish woman going look what they've done I can only imagine how you felt but I suppose what what do you do after QVC to get that hit so after QVC then we um we started focusing on um relationships with distributors so we really at the now we're focused on the chinese and asian market um it took us two years to to find the right distributor to work with so all for the last two years we have we spent literally traveling all around the world like literally australia um australia three times china eight times Dubai six times and that's just to meet with distributors so we're, we're we we spent two years doing due diligence so we could have just gone with anyone um, and we could be you know at we could be doing huge numbers and huge volumes now but we decided that we would take our time do the due diligence on who we want to work with and grow the brand at a steady and slow, not a slow pace, but a steady and manageable, manageable pace. pace. Yes. So we have no, we have no investment. We've got no company debt. We don't owe the banks anything. So we, we made that decision quite early on and um, that that was the way that we wanted to run the business. So what a beautiful <laughs> thing. Well, it, it's a very rare thing to be in the position that you're in. And in fact, uh, we had Dan and Linda Kiley from Vox Pro who actually sold their business late last year yes. who found themselves in that position. And, and it was hard won um, and, and holding on to that uh, was, was one of their key goals as they grew their business. So it's, it's absolutely fantastic. But I suppose we can't, um, we can't talk about consumption um, without, without addressing COVID-19 and, and how that has impacted your business. So I suppose it, the, the, the day the government announced the schools were closing and then the stores closed, we just thought, oh my goodness. So uh, immediately we lost all of our wholesale business in Ireland. So we, and what percentage of your yeah. overall business would that have been? So that would have been 50% of our wow. business. Wow. Yeah. But we didn't lose it. So we gained every single bit of it online. So thank God. So I, I, this might sound like a really stupid question, mm. but, but why? why? Why all of a sudden um, did your online presence explode to fill the gaps of the retail presence? 
So I think the reason for it is, is that we have such a loyal customer following in Ireland that our customers, if they couldn't buy it in store, they came to our online store to buy it. And do you think at the same time there are emerging trends around how women approach skincare? Definitely. I think definitely. I think that our brand is so well positioned now um, in today's world for, for the woman that is working at home that may not want to wear a full face of makeup every day, but you, they still want their skin to look good. So with using our products consistently, you can have that. Your skin can look good um, and you don't have to pile on makeup. So we always, our philosophy is less is more. So I prefer less makeup and I prefer to look after my skin. Um, and I think that definitely people are, and especially women are with lockdown, they have had time to have so many makeup free days and discover that, okay, I don't need to cover up my skin as much as I did. And I can have good looking skin if I look after it. You are one of the alumni of uh, EY's Entrepreneur of the Year program. Um, what sort of value, because obviously you're giving huge value to, to your customer, what sort of value are you able to exchange among that network? What's the power of a two pest and water? I think for me as a younger, smaller business, um, I mean, the businesses that are uh, the alumni in EY, some of the businesses are, they're just so big. And the experience that these people have is unbelievable. Um, and I can tap into their knowledge and ask any of them any questions at any time. And, you know, they, they don't want anything back for giving me that knowledge. Um, so I think, I mean, I, I think it's brilliant. I've learned so much from every, from a lot of people in there already, and I've so much to learn. So I'm just gutted that we didn't get to do the, the trip <laughs> this year in May. There, but, there'll be other trips. Um, I, I'm taken as you're sitting there by, you know, the, the, the power of your design um, and the power of your, your product. Um, have you seen a rise in, in men being interested in, in skincare? Definitely. So especially for our brand, it's monochromatic, it's black and white. It doesn't look too female. Um, uh, Liberty in London, they actually told us that mostly it's men that buy our product in their store, which is That's surprising. Extraordinary. Yes. <laughs> and it's funny because I know certainly in, in, um, in textiles and clothing um, up until COVID, the, the, the rate of increase in sales in menswear was more than double that in women's wear. I think it's a really mm -hmm. um, interesting market to, to enter into because I think mm -hmm. men are changing their habits completely. And I think the idea Definitely. that men and women in Ireland and all across the world could be sitting uh, on Zoom calls with glowing skin supported yeah. by pestle and mortar is a lovely <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, Sonia, my namesake. So nice to have you um, on Architects of Business today and so wonderful to hear your story. We wish you continued success. Thanks very much, Sonia. <laughs> Thanks for listening and watching The Architects of Business made in partnership with EY Entrepreneur of the Year. Thanks to the whole team here at Joe and of course to our entrepreneur today, Sonia DC. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe to get brand new shows directly into your feed.